Um, broadening the conversation out a little bit, um, how does the contemporary hard ultra left in America, groups like An Antifa, Black Lives Matter, and that, those kind of groups, how do they relate to mainstream Democratic Party politics? Because it does sort of seem to me extraordinary that the party of JFK, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and, and what have you, now has people like Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez and these kind of people who are sort of ill-defined but ultra-left, sort of verging on Marxism, uh, but not in a very specific or intellectually persuasive way. Sure, I mean, how, sure. how, how, do, how are they becoming sort of concertina well, uh, do, into each other? It doesn't really surprise me. Uh, so, so the new left, the, 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 the AOCs of the world, are coming to become more and more important and more and more dominant within the, Repub the Democratic Party. Um, and, and the Democratic Party has taken a shift to kind of these new left positions. Uh, it, which doesn't really surprise me. Uh, it, it's something that I think Ayn Rand predicted uh, in the 1960s would ultimately happen. The JFKs, the LBJs, uh, Johnson, uh, the FD, even the FDRs, um, whatever they represent, they don't represent anything principled. Uh, they present some mushy welfare state mixed economy position that doesn't really have any principles and if he really guiding lights. I mean, uh, uh, John F. Kennedy was a known pragmatist who didn't really stand for anything substantive. When you, when you have an environment in where the, the, the consensus is kind of wishy-washy, neither here nor there, that is incredibly vulnerable for people who actually believe in something, even something really bad, to start tilting people in that direction. Um, uh, long-term ideas are what matters. Long-term, it is the radical positions, the, mo the more consistent positions that win out. The, the mixed economy is not sustainable. The mixture will either move towards more authoritarianism or towards more freedom. And I think what we've seen in the Democratic Party is this mixture of some freedom, but a lot of constraints, and certainly in the economic sphere, a lot of regulations and controls and, and redistribution of wealth and so on, this mixture in the Democratic Party has led to those advocating for more controls and more consistent controls to dominate uh, and to dominate and to move the Democratic Party towards a more kind of authoritarian uh, positioning. I think they've done the same thing on the right. Uh, you know, the kind of the party of, I don't know, Richard Nixon and, and certainly the Bushes, which stood for nothing. Right, stood for vaguely free markets, but never, no, not too seriously. And that's, you know, cutting taxes. The one thing the Republicans have always been good at is cutting taxes, but not in the name of liberty or freedom or anything like that, because they never cut spending and they never really deregulate. And, and of course, that mishmash, that inconsistency, that unprincipled position opens Republicans up to the kind of, I'd say, new right which is much more nationalistic and much more fascistic and much more uh, authoritarian. So I think both left and right are moving towards uh, authoritarianism, uh, different brands of authoritarianism, as a consistent application of uh, you know, uh, the underlying ideas that, that are behind each one of uh, e the left and the right. In that sense, I don't like that spectrum anymore because what we're seeing is collectivism of the left and collectivism yeah. of the right, and people like us and don't belong anywhere near there, we're like on a different dimension, and, and the political dimension I like is collectivism versus individualism, uh, with much of the collectivism on the left and right on the collectivist side, and, and the few of us who still stand for individualism on the other side. So in a way, what you're describing is very much what Hayek was uh, writing about in the context of the Germanic world when he wrote his famous book, The Road to Serfdom, where he argued that actually fascism and um, hardline socialism, which were generally seen as being polar opposites, in fact, he saw fascism as being the logical outcome of a very heavily regulated uh, socialist uh, economy and society in that the real continuum is between liberals at one end and various forms of collectivist at the other. Absolutely. So I agree with that completely. And more than that, I think Hayek was also right in the sense that uh, he kind of talks about the slippery slope in the road to serfdom. That is, you know, once you give in a little bit, once you concede 
some of the collectivist agenda, once you concede to them, then you concede more and more and more because the more consistent party, again, which are the, you know, a little bit of collectivism yeah. versus a lot of collectivism. The a lot of collectivism, the fascists and the socialists are more consistent about their collectivism than this mishiwashi middle ground of a mixed economy. And, and uh, so there's a slippery slope that once you set, once you go the JFK route, or once you go the Richard Nixon route, the left is going to become more collectivist and the right is going to become more collectivist because neither the Nixon, or the Republican Nixon or the Republican Bush or the, the, the Kennedy, neither one of them uh, stand for individualism, stand for liberalism in its, in its proper conception. Yeah. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brook Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.